do you think Thomas Hitzelberger is the, is the right person at the right time to run this club short term and long term? In 10 years or 5 to 10 years it should be upper half upper half I guess. Yeah, well, what do you make of Hitzelberger as as the managing director at the moment? Stuttgart fans expect your club to be in the next 10 to 20 years time well I hope so I do like him as a person I, I, I don't know if he, I, he, he seems competent but he seems like a genuine genuine guy so a, a fan can identify mm-hmm. also because he played for the for Stuttgart he won the title in 2007 and, and fans love that when a former player is in a executive role at the club I do hope we can succeed with him. We also got Sven Mislintat in, which is our sporting director. He used to work for Dortmund. He, he found players like Kakachinji Kagawa or Robert Lewandowski. Then he moved to Arsenal, where he was for one year season or one and a half or something like that. And then yeah. he got... Did he, find, did he find anyone at Arsenal? Um, Guendouzi he found. I think he found Brera, Lucas Torreira. I mean... You didn't have to find Lucas Torreira. He had a good World Cup and then he just came from Italy to Arsenal. Yeah, but Guendouzi, okay, maybe character-wise he's a bit of a problem, but I think he's a talent, right? Matteo Guendouzi. Uh, how does he get in that French midfield? I don't know. He's it's, as not, as it's not about that. It's all about... <laughs> He's doing doing very well for the under twenty one team, but I don't know exactly what he which players he got in at, at Arsenal. But it was when he went to Stuttgart, we were second, we were second second division team. It was somewhat of a surprise because it's a big name. He worked he worked with Klopp at Dortmund. He worked with Tuchel at Dortmund. Then he moved to Arsenal. He's a big name, so I do think there's plenty of potential. I don't know if it. Will ever succeed because Stuttgart is a very difficult club to to manage. And why do you say that difficult? Because there are a lot of outside factors that contribute to the to the success of the club, which is, which isn't the fans anymore. Like maybe in the past, the fans contributed to the, to some of the chaos because the expectations among the amongst the fans were were pretty high in the past as well. But nowadays, they've gotten realistic. The problem are outside forces like like sponsors, I would say, because Mercedes do have a lot of a lot of influence on the club, and there have been plenty of arguments between behind clo- closed doors, of course, yeah. but be- between like the sporting the people in charge of the sporting stuff and and people from Mercedes Benz. So it is somewhat difficult, and I think if he fails. I don't know if we can how this club's gonna be saved again. It's just gonna be. But it's it's with you guys. It's not a problem of time, yeah. No, it's not a problem of time. But of course, if you get relegated again, again, yeah. With, I don't know. Then there's gonna... something going wrong because in the last six years you can't be relegated thrice. I mean, even Newcastle haven't done that. Yeah, even Newcastle, I guess. <laughs> I don't know if they've. <laughs> yeah. But I would, yeah, saying talking about Newcastle, I would say Stuttgart is the Newcastle of. Oh, yeah. Or Leeds, maybe. But Leeds. with a good owner. Who? With a good owner. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean, you don't have Mike Ashley, no? We're not <laughs> bringing in any Saudi Saudi investment groups as well. Yeah. So. yeah. Uh, you mentioned this. Uh, you mentioned this fact about the fans being contributors. But back in 2017 of June. Yeah, you said June this. Yeah, you you said this thing about fans being contributors and how right now Mercedes is way more involved than fans would like them to be. I mean, the sponsor money is all fancy, but let the sporting club take care of itself and not the external factors like these cash cow sponsoring companies influence what's happening in a football club. In 2017, June, 84.2% voted for the Ausgeldelerung. Firstly, what, what, what can you tell us about what an Ausgeldelerung is? And also, then we discuss about the 50 plus 1 rule. Well, earlier you asked me about the future of it. If we should think more modern or if we should should think more tradi- in a traditional way. And this form of outsourcing mm. is kind of a middle way because you're selling off some assets of the outsourced professional football part of the club. You're selling off some assets. In this case, it was... It was 11.75%. It was 11.75% to Mercedes-Benz. Yeah, and they for like 41.5 million yeah, for 41 and a half million. So it's it's like a boost, a short, a one-time boost for the club, which can be used well or not. Our case, we didn't use it well at all. 
was basically thrown out of the window because we got relegated again. So this outsourcing, I'll be honest, I'm a member of the club. I was in favor of that as well because if our goal is to be top top six, let's say, in the Bundesliga, there has to be, and you want you want to achieve that pretty quickly, you have to make up some of the difference, which you lost in the last, last years because of bad management. And at that point, we were doing pretty well. We got promoted. We had a good coach, which we brought in from, from the Dortmund youth setup. We got a sporting director, which seemed to get everything right. And then the um, Ausgliederung happened. And a lot of people were in favor because the club was doing well. There was excitement around the club. A few months later, the sporting director got fired, replaced by Michael Reschke, who was came from Bayern Munich, which was a disaster. And he spent a lot of that money, which, which was given, given by Mercedes-Benz. I still think that it wasn't a problem, the outsourcing. Like, the outsourcing itself wasn't a problem. You think How the money was spent was the problem. Yeah. Now, you are a member of the club and you were in favor of, of voting for the outsourcing. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about it now? About the outsourcing? Yeah. I mean, now you can say, well, it was a mistake, but... Because at the moment in Bundesliga, there are, I think, five clubs who have not, who are not yeah, Ausgleich leadered. And one of them is, is Freiburg. And they have been in the Bundesliga for the better part of a decade. And Union and Düsseldorf also have not been outsourcing and Schalke 04 as well. Schalke 04. So two out of these examples have been part of the Bundesliga for more than a decade. And do you think that was a good idea to do it? And can you go back to not doing outsourcing again? I mean, we could in theory, but it, would, it won't happen because we don't have the money to pay so off like, Mercedes. Yeah. And I don't think they are willing to let us uh, buy their assets. So... The thing with Freiburg, Freiburg is a different case because there is so much patience around that club. They've had their coach for, correct me if I'm wrong, nine, ten years. 11, it seems like yeah. It, yeah, 11 years. And Stuttgart, of course, the outsourcing now, you can say it's a, it, it was a mistake. But even with, without the outsourcing, we're not Freiburg. There's still so many more sponsors, so much more money around Stuttgart, around the club, that we would never be like Freiburg. And our goal should not be just to survive relegation each year, which is Freiburg's goal. Our goal should be in the future to look up again. Another club, Schalke 04, which hasn't outsourced as well, they want to do it now because of Corona, COVID-19. They're doing horribly in the Bundesliga, they're doing horribly financially, and they need that money. I wouldn't say it's just a problem. Look at Bayern Munich. They've been they've brought in money as well. It's not about the mon money. It's not about the money. It's about how you use it. And if you believe in the management, you can take that step of outsourcing. It's just a matter of getting people in those key spots which know how to use it, which know how to scout, and which will use it responsibly. And we weren't able to do it because I guess the fan in Stuttgart was a little bit cheated. Because the fan in Stuttgart was cheated because we were being lied to. We, we were being said to have success. We need that money. We want to build a stable, stable environment. The only way which how we can survive in the Bundesliga is by outsourcing some of the some some of some of the club. And most of the fans believed that. Most of the fans said, "Yes, our goal should be top top eight, top seven, Euro Europa League." Two months later, the sporting director got fired. Six months later, the coach got fired. So it was a lie. It was a lie by the president who pushed that campaign, who pushed for the outsourcing. It was a lie. He lied to the fans about promising them success and promising them stability, which never happened. So I would say still it's not a mistake. The but, mistake uh, was, was electing that particular president. The mistake was putting bad people into <laughs> into positions where they should have no, no business being. There's no going back now, right? Yeah, no. There's no going. But we, we even want to sell more. Like, we want to sell more, more assets. Um, I don't know if that's going to happen because, of of course, the economical situation isn't very good. I don't know who's going to invest in Stuttgart. I don't know how much the club is worth anymore because because of COVID. Every every club's not doing particularly well. So I don't think we're going to do it now. They want, they should, it should have been done already. So it's going to be a thing of, thing of the future, I guess. But at, right now, it seems like we don't, we don't even need those big big dollars, big euros for to succeed. But with the 41 and a half million euros that you get from Mercedes, is it every year or is it just for... No, it was once. Like it was once <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, and they completely 
mess this up big time. Okay, so yeah. I mean, you can say no, we yeah, we fucked it up. It was a mistake. Yeah. No, we messed it up. I mean, you can say we bought in some players which we can maybe sell in the future. For example, we bought Ozan Kabak from Galatasaray for twelve and now million. And he's in and then, Schalke. Yeah, and then we sold him for fifteen. Technically, we didn't make much of a profit of that. So I mean, you could you could say yeah, we fucked it up. <laughs> Basically. Yeah. I mean, what happens now since Mercedes have like 11 and a half percent of the stakes? What do they do with these stakes? Basically, um, and that that's just for the football club. Like the club Stutt- VfB Stuttgart, they also have hockey and track and field and stuff. The money was only for the football club. It wasn't for the for the other parts of the for the club. It's somewhat difficult to explain, but there's a supervisory board for the football for the football football division, and Mercedes Benz has two seats at that table. One seat is the president of the of the whole club, who has another seat, and then it's filled with other people from the club. It's also filled with other people from 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 other companies, from sponsors, let's say, and also so you're trying to get like a um, both people from the business side and people from the sports side. So Mercedes, since it has two two seats at that table, it has some somewhat of an influence on the club and the direction the club goes. Right now, it seems to be very quiet around Mercedes. They're not saying much or nothing comes out. But once the sport, the situation starts to change again, where we we're not doing well, where we're losing games. We will have some interviews from one of the members from who's who's part of Mercedes, who will give some of it his advice, and then you will have you will have arguments behind closed doors. So Mercedes has has an has an influence, and if you talk to people who are not really familiar with Stuttgart, like people from other countries, they would say, and you say, oh, we're sponsored by, Mer- by Mercedes, people would say, wow, that's amazing, you have, Mer- you have the Mercedes car on your jersey, like, who has that, that's amazing, yeah. but it's, it's not just that, of course it looks amazing on the jersey, but they also bad sides to it as well. Apart from this outsourcing money that Stuttgart did not use very well, to put it politely, what do you think is... The current challenge, apart from also the economic situation that the entire world is going through, what are the current challenges? Yeah, of course, COVID-19 hit us very hard. We had to make a lot of sacrifices when it comes came to the transfer budget. We got in a few players. We got in a few players on loan, but we weren't anywhere close to what would have happened if we hadn't had the coronavirus. But in addition to that, the biggest challenge is to keeping the club in the lead. In Germany, it tends to be it seems like it's pretty easy to manage promotion in the first first year. Yeah. The second year is where, it's get, where it gets difficult because the first year there's some level of surprise how you play. First division teams don't know the players that well. I mean, the entire league is a surprise. I mean, yeah, one yeah. season you can finish in the Europa League, the next season you're fighting for relegation. So, so it's the, the best league in the world. It's not the most interesting, <laughs> most interesting league yeah. in the world. It's the not most the most entertaining league. <laughs> It's got a lot of goals, guys, so you need to watch this one. No, the biggest challenge is just establishing ourselves in the first league. Mm-hmm. That's the biggest challenge. And it's it seems like a banal thing to say because of course that's what you do if you if you get if you get relegated. But if we get relegated again, I don't know if it's gonna be as easy again as to, to go up. Look at Hamburg for example. They were in the league for yeah. I don't know, forever it seems like. Yeah, they, they, were they never got league. relegated. Yes. And they've now been stuck in Second league for three years, and they're losing so much money, just TV money, just sponsoring, sponsor. They were sponsored by Fly Emirates. So the thing is, you lose a lot of money when you go back to second league, and one year you can you can go back immediately. You yeah. op- can operate with like somewhat of a Bundesliga budget. You, one year you can do it because if you go up again, that that will even out. But in the second year, you have to make a lot of sacrifices to have any form of success in the future. We have to, we have to keep in the Bundesliga this year, next year, and then the next next few years, and then we can look up because if we look, if you look at the Bundesliga, there's so a lot of teams like Freiburg, like Augsburg, like Union, which don't have anything near our financial potential and our potential as a club. So there is a possibility to look up in in the standings in the future, but right now it's just to be realistic and say 15th place that's all we want that's like one place above relegation playoff is it yes <laughs> okay he's, he's aiming very low for the season which actually yeah since he, he's already spoken about it i want to say 
despite all the history the tradition the fan base and also the economic potential of the city you guys go into the season with the youngest squad in the bundesliga that's after mario gomez retired, retired yes. and also Bakst- what happened to bachstuber he sent to the reserves well bachstuber he's it's very difficult with bachstuber because he played for bayern munich He played for the national. He played for Bayern Munich under Guardiola. He was one of the best center backs in, in Germany. And then he had a lot of injuries. And a few years ago, Bartschuber moved to Stuttgart. And there has been some problems with him because he cusses people out in training. He cusses out the coach during games when like, the coach makes a mistake, in, a, in his opinion. And he cusses out his teammates a lot. So it's, it's not very good for young players to play alongside someone like him who... Of course, if he's some extraordinary player, you can deal with it. But he wasn't doing very well, even in second league, because he has um, speed deficits. So we put him in the second team, the second Stuttgart team. And there he's playing in the, in the fourth division of Germany. I mean, it's kind of unfortunate because he was one of the best center backs in Germany. But no. if he's actively hurting the team by putting down players and cussing out teammates, it's not very good to develop younger players because they need but time and it, but nobody nobody in the in the country wants back stuba as their center half that he's playing for the second second division team i think batch was very happy with the money he's having at both the wage he's earning at stuttgart okay they advised him to leave they said he wouldn't play much right now he's not playing at all mm-hmm. but he said no i'll i'll play for the second team and, and get some money and uh, yeah he has and, to feed a family as well right so yeah and, and the squad like i said is the youngest at an average age of 24 how do you think they are going to be faring with with almost little or no experience with the center half in uh, babs tubel's form and gomez retiring how are they going to go like you already say that you will be happy with the 15th place but with young blood inexperience do you think they can do better than your expectation of the 15th place or do you think they'll be again fighting like, for relegation if i'm honest my goal isn't 15th place i'm uh, the expectation is 15th place i want to be 12 11 or something like that i would be happy with that i do think experience is somewhat of a platitude like if you in germany if you watch the game Klopp's first uh, Dortmund team, average age was 23 when they won the title. So. Yeah, it's somewhat of a platitude because you say you need experience. Look at him, he's a leader because he played for 20 years or something like that. And every normal fan would say, no, he's not doing very, very well. But the pundits would say, oh, he's very impo- instrumental to the team. I think it's somewhat of a platitude. Of course, there's some situations where maybe experience pays off. But I would say we have, in the past, we've had bad experience. We've had experience, we've had players... With experience, who's only experienced bad, 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 yeah, who've only had like, bad experiences. So they're accustomed to losing. And if you're accustomed to losing, you'll lose and you'll, you'll lose again because... But didn't, didn't Gomez's experience help you come to Bundesliga this season? No, I wouldn't say that. But he, was, he wasn't he was even an instrumental part of it? Or was it all Gonzalez? Maybe maybe off the field. I think Gomez was important off the field, on the field. I didn't. I don't think he had much of it. He scored some goals, but yeah, seven. it was kind of a... It was more of a feel-good story. Get up to, sec- to first league, get promoted. He scores in, in his last game for Stuttgart. It's more of a feel-good story. In hindsight, it was a big, it was a big mistake to get him back a few years ago because... He's earning the most. He earned three million in, in, in the second league, second oh, division. Wow. And for that money, he should be scoring 25 goals. He scored, I don't know, six, seven, eight, something like that, which, which wasn't enough. I don't, I don't mind having younger players. We also have all the experienced players like Gonzalo Castro, who played for Dortmund, who played for Liverpool, who played for the national team. So you do have some players who are or. Daniel Didavi even, who's our number 10. So you, you have some older players which help the younger players. Castro's our, our captain, of course. So I'm, I'm, I'm somewhat optimistic. I try not to be optimistic anymore because <laughs> yeah. it, 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 it's, it's, it has backfired so many times. And you always say, this is going to be our coach. Now we can move in the, into the future. Now we can look up again. This failed at so many times that like now... When a new manager come, came in, I was like, okay, I don't care anymore. It doesn't touch me anymore. Back then, I was like sad because he left or was angry because he was in, in his jobs for so long. But now it's more of a, we'll see what happens. I'm happy with what we have right now. 
let's not try to get too optimistic, even though I am optimistic because I like I like so many of the players we're having on the team right now. It's, yeah. You, you like young players succeeding. Every fan loves that because... What do you say oh, in this current situation? What would you improve or what would you change with your football club so that if there's a younger fan growing up at the moment, he doesn't have this feeling of, okay, there's a new coach, I don't care. One thing that has to improve somewhat is bringing the youth, bringing the local youth more into the into the, into the into the first team. As I said before, we have a lot of younger players, but those are from other countries, and which isn't a problem. But if you want to be successful, you also need to have the local youth. And we have some good players. I do think we should more, make more of an effort to get them in back, to get them into the first team, in addition to the players we're bringing in from abroad. Yeah, one thing is that I don't build in stupid release clauses into players' contracts, which Bayern Munich can use in the future to to hurt us and to make the Bundesliga even more interesting. That's one thing I would change. But of course, that also depends on the player because the player has some some power in the in the contract negotiations as well. But I don't I don't want to see any more Stuttgart players leaving for Bayern Munich or the or leaving for any team in Germany. I don't want any Stuttgart player leaving for another team in Germany and strengthening their club because it hurts us. In, it hurts us. By de facto, it hurts us. We lose a good player to another team. Yeah. It improves them. We, and it hurts us. Yeah.